Every NBA player has a place they like to put on a show, whether it's their hometown or the historic arenas like New York, the mecca of basketball in Madison Square Garden, or LA because of its bright lights and courtside superstars. Different arenas can bring out show-stopping performances out of different players, especially Madison Square Garden, where we saw Kobe Bryant's 61, or Jordan's double nickel game in 1995. Where they play can change how they play, and so can who they play. Today's question is, what happens when a historic franchise, a rival, and a super team meet LeBron all at once? Hi, my name is Rotomi. I love basketball. I love to talk basketball. And I hope one day you can share that same love for basketball as I. There are the games against rivals, where players want to rise to the occasion and prove a point or set the tone. Especially when it comes to MVP races. Last year, we saw Jokic versus Embiid. We've seen Giannis versus Harden in 2018 or simply the decade of Magic and Bird. But imagine throughout your career, you have had more than one rival. LeBron has notable rivals, both being future or current Hall of Famers. For example, Steph who has robbed him of three championships and an MVP. Kawhi Leonard who has made him curse at the sight of checking into a game. And Kobe Bryant who he rivaled for the best player in the league as they both Chase Jordan. Here we have LeBron against his most notable rivals. We have his points per game average against each one and his career high against each one. His lowest high was 40 points against Giannis, most likely because of the matchup and the way they size. Against Steph though, he has had the best career high at 56 points and averaged 30 points against him. I would argue Steph has been his main rival in the latter half of his career as we've seen him go to straight four finals against LeBron. Overall, this graph shows that LeBron has performed consistently great against each one of his rivals. And it shows that he plays best against his number one rival, who I would put first, Steph. However, LeBron James's greatness has led to whole teams being built to beat him. LeBron doesn't just rival players, he rivals teams. Let's look at two noteworthy teams where he continues to display rivalry energy. Starting with Golden State, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green have tormented LeBron since 2015. Then it got worse. Kevin Durant joins in the 2016 offseason, and now LeBron's constantly fighting an uphill battle. Throughout this period of time, we saw LeBron perform consistently great. He had seven 40-point games against them in the playoffs. And in 2015, he averaged 35 points, 13 rebounds, and 8 assists in the final series against them. In his career, he has had 15 50-point games in the playoffs and regular season. And two of those games sit with Golden State. One of them being the famous J.R. Smith game. Hill misses. Rebound goes to the Cavs. J.R. Smith brings it back. Now one of the timeout, but too late to get it. But with all of the games against Golden State, they seem to take place in the playoffs, simply because LeBron James is in the East and Golden State are in the West. So naturally, his regular season numbers suffer. And among the teams that he has played 10 or more games against, Golden State actually ranks second, first being the Wizards, and just after them sits the Raptors. Yes, the Toronto Raptors. They have felt playoff pain. So much pain that they became a meme. Lebronto. In 2018, Lebronto was given to the city of Toronto after Lebron James repeatedly dominated in performances. Lebron James has faced the Raptors three times in the playoffs and two of those times he swept them. He was the sole reason they struggled to make the finals. We saw this man hit a ridiculous buzzer beat play. He changes in the air and gets it off the glass in plenty of time. Embarrass defenders from the three point line. <laughs> and jump out of the gym whenever and however he could. Manages to track it down. James on the drive! After the buzzer beater in 2018 where they would lose in the Eastern Conference semi-finals, 
they decided to blow up the team. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. And it was after that LeBron would go into free agency and join the Los Angeles Lakers the following season, where we saw them make the finals with the newly acquired Kawhi Leonard. The LeBronto title was only temporary though, and only kicked in during the playoffs. LeBron James has played the Raptors 58 times during the regular season and he has averaged 27, 7 and 7. Now, we would all sit here and say those are impressive numbers because they are. But his Raptors regular season numbers ranks 18 among all teams he's played against. This being said though, he is still the highest scoring NBA player to play on the Toronto Raptors floor. Yes, you want to say Kobe with 81 but Kobe actually did that in Los Angeles. I know right now you're still thinking about that question. What about the historic franchise, the rivalry player, and the super team? Who are you on about? It's Boston. The Boston Celtics have had the hardest time against LeBron, which didn't surprise me. When you think about it, all factors have been at play during LeBron's career to motivate him to perform well. Okay, number one, the Celtics franchise. The Celtics are tied first for most NBA championships in NBA history. Being a historically great franchise, there is a sense of pride that the players are able to enjoy. This makes TD Garden's atmosphere amazing for home players, but hell for opposing players. Boston fans have been mentioned as one of the most hated fan bases of all time. So that will always be a reason for LeBron James to shut them up. And he has done this multiple times with his games. February 2006, LeBron James put up a 43-point triple-double against the Celtics to silence the fans and ice the game. The hostile atmosphere is enough to raise his adrenaline and get him to perform at his A-game. The next factor is the rivalries. The number one LeBron hater, Paul Pierce, a die-hard Boston player who played LeBron from rookie to prime and never had a great time. Paul Pierce was arguably the best scoring small forward in basketball at the time, which made LeBron a threat. Paul Pierce has gone on record to belittle LeBron's greatness and remains petty, especially because he has more wins than any other player against LeBron. Pierce's brilliance on the court and loud mouth made him one of LeBron's main rivals. Against Pierce, LeBron averaged 29 points, 7 rebounds and 6 assists. Meanwhile, the score of Paul Pierce, none of the other stats are even worth mentioning at this point. Needless to say, LeBron James always found a way to rise to the occasion because he knew losing that game would give Paul Pierce the edge over him to talk about how he had a good game and how he was a better player. LeBron James marked his territory and set the standard of he was the best small forward in the league every time. The third factor. After the 06-07 season, LeBron was seen as the best player in the league and alone was dismantling teams with a lackluster supporting cast. He was crowned King of the East and no one saw his reign ending. Until Boston decided to make a trade for prime Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen in 2007. This started the Super Team era. Up until then, LeBron vs Pierce was an even matchup, but the arrival of the Super Team meant that he had to operate on another level. Not only did we have LeBron in his prime, but we had LeBron with his back against the wall. This team was set up to stop LeBron and contend for a championship. At the beginning, he was at Cleveland and he would play them 11 times during the regular season, where he would perform outstandingly. Four of those games would be 20 plus point games and the others were all 30 plus points, some nearing the 40 point mark, but he could never get it done. Beating the Celtics seemed like a tall task. So he would create his own super team in Miami with Chris Bosh and Dwayne Wade where he would learn to win and he would end the reign of terror that Boston had on him. He went to the finals four times in a row, rushing past the Boston Celtics super team. Against Boston, his job on the super team would become a lot easier, which naturally led to a drop in his points per average until he had to play them in the playoffs, where we would get this meme and this jaw-dropping performance. LeBron would eventually be the reason that the super team broke up and he became the main reason that the Celtics never saw the finals in the 2010s. Against the Celtics in the regular season, LeBron would average 29 points, seven rebounds and seven assists. This was the highest against any other team in the regular season. Boston had the right combination of factors that made them LeBron's number one victim. So this is what happens when a historic franchise, a rival and a super team 
meet LeBron James. Thanks for tuning in and getting to the end. Please like and comment. I want to hear your thoughts on who you think his greatest rivals are. Please subscribe as well. Each subscription allows me to keep pushing this content. Thank you and until next time.